Greetings, HISD community and MAV scholars. My name is Mr. Jones, and I am coming to you again with another lesson about order of operations. Yes, order of operations. It's not hard at all. The only thing we have to do is use the golden rule PEMDAS. And that's the strategy, the age-old strategy that many mathematicians use in order to solve these kind of expressions. Follow me. Objective for the day. I will generate equivalent numerical expressions using order of operations, including whole number, exponents, and prime factorization. The vocabulary you need for this lesson would be factor, integers, numerical expressions, operations, and prime factorization. Subtraction, multiplication, division are all examples of operations. The order of operations is important because it guarantees that all people can read and solve a problem exactly the same way without a standard order of operations, formulas for real world calculations in finance and science, it would be pretty useless. And more importantly, it would be extremely difficult to know if you are getting the right answer on a math test. Plain and simple, when solving for expressions, be sure to use the order of operations. The standard order of operations is as follows. Number one, parentheses. Number two, exponents. Number three, multiplication and division. And number four, addition and subtraction. And there you have it. We will dive into how to use this strategy right after a quick exercise. Yep, you guessed it. A good old fashioned multiplication chart. Just in case you guys were having a little trouble multiplying and dividing. So grab a pencil and paper and let's begin. Okay guys, we are going to work on the project-based learning for this week. So the student weekly learning targets, um, the students will be able to describe the center, spread, and shape of a data distribution. The student should be able to demonstrate and verify the following. I can model one variable, one step equations. I can solve one variable, one step equations. And I can tell if a given value makes a one variable or one step equation true. All right, so it starts off with the question, the reminder, do you guys remember numerical expressions and order operations? So the expressions actually are different from equations. So what differentiates an expression and an equation? So the expression, a series of numbers with operations, but they have no equal sign, an equation, uh, the equa, equa tells me that equation has an equal sign. All right, because it's part of the word. All right, so that's the only thing that differentiates an expression from an equation, okay? Um, the equation has an equal sign and an expression doesn't. All right, so a numerical expression is a mathematical phrase that contains numbers and operations. I also want to highlight that 3 plus 5 is an expression and 4 divided by 1 is an expression. You have numbers and you have no equal sign. 
and also 3 plus 2 equals 5 and 9 divided by 3 equals 3 is that an expression or an equation yes you guess it is the equation why because of the equal sign good job guys all right so let's start with the four basic operations the four basic operations would be addition subtraction multiplication and division uh, we went over the four basic operations we'll begin by completing this table alright so the thing you want to remember with order of operations is it's exactly what it says what time do I perform which order of operations okay now before I begin the order of operations or explaining it I want to point out the age-old strategy that all teachers use all math teachers use this strategy which is PEMDAS P-E-M-D-A-S okay I'm gonna actually write it vertically so that you can see the acronym and what they mean the P stands for parentheses the E stands for exponents the M for multiplication the D for division A addition and S represents subtraction if you're having trouble in recalling PEMDAS the strategy I'll give you an acronym for it okay so PEMDAS would be please excuse my dear Aunt Sally an age-old strategy that most math teachers use however I use please excuse my dad's ashy skin I've learned over the years that it, that sticks a little more because I guess it's a little funnier. And dad, if you're watching this, I don't really think you have ashy skin. I'm just doing this for my students. All right, so we'll begin with our first example. We have our strategy already written, so we'll have something to refer back to. All right, so 7 minus 3 plus 2 what operations am I using for this particular expression it will be addition and subtraction yes so which is my first step where is the order in what order do I perform the operation alright so the A and the S um, addition and subtraction are said to be grouped together and the M and the D which represents multiplication and division are also grouped together what do I mean by grouped together well they're together so if you actually see uh, division before you see multiplication you have to divide first okay you have to go in the order uh, whichever comes first so in this particular problem I see the subtraction comes before the addition so I wouldn't add before I subtract I will go ahead and subtract before I add because they're grouped together the A and the S alright so I subtract first I have 7 minus 3 gives me 4 I take that 4 and I add it to 2 and that gives me a final value of 6 very very simple okay well my next problem I see a parentheses okay so that just kinda of sticks out like a sore thumb 7 minus 3 is in the parentheses plus 4 so if I refer back to my acronym I see that the P parentheses comes first before addition so therefore I'm gonna solve the parentheses which is 7 minus 3 equals 4 and then 4 plus 4 is 8 okay what are my operations for this particular expression parentheses and addition again um, the 7 minus 3 gives me 4 and that 4 plus another 4 is 8 with the next problem I see 5 plus 8 times 2 so I refer back to my strategy okay it's sitting up there for a reason Okay, I noticed that addition and multiplication are my operations, but in the actual acronym PEMDAS, the multiplication comes first. Therefore, I'll multiply 8 times 2, which gives me 16, 
and then I will add that 16 plus 5 giving me 21 21 being my final answer as you can see it's not difficult the more the most difficult part about it is to figure out which operation I do first and these are kind of like two steps so when you have four and five different steps it's very very imperative that you follow PEMDAS my next problem I see 9 divided by 3 minus 1 I refer back to my acronym PEMDAS and I see that division comes before subtraction okay not only just in the expression but actually in my acronym that's what I'm actually following it's my roadmap so the 9 divided by 3 gives me 3 minus 1 well 3 minus 1 gives me 2 alright in my last problem I see 28 divided by 4 plus 3 Here's where I want to pull out my multiplication chart because if I'm having trouble trying to figure out what 28 divided by 4 is, two ways you can do this. You can actually uh, work backwards and say what times 4 gives me 28 or you can just pull out your multiplication chart. You find 28 where it's lined up with the number 4 and you see what meets 4 in order to get 28. What meets 4 in order to get 28 and you guessed it is 7. I'm going to add that 7 to 3 and I get 10. Now why did I divide before I add it? Well you guessed it. I look back up to my road map and I saw that I have to divide division becomes before addition. Okay so 28 divided by 4 equals 7 and I'm going to add that to 3 to get 10. You guys did a wonderful job figuring out these expressions. Shannon and Hannah each worked the same math problem, but they got different answers. Look at their problem and answers. The expression reads 7 squared, open parentheses, 20 plus 10, close parentheses, divided by 100. Now, we know with PEMDAS, we have to follow it to a T. That means the first letter that comes up, we have to respect that. And so the first letter in the acronym PEMDAS is P, which stands for parentheses, right? And we are fortunate to have a parentheses in this problem. So therefore, we have to solve that parentheses first, no matter where it is in the expression. Could be first, could be last, but we have to solve parentheses first. Okay, all right, so we have 20 plus 10, that gives us 30. When we rewrite it, we have 7 squared, 30 inside the parentheses, divided by 100. So now we see that we have 7 squared, and we have 30 in the parentheses, divided by 100. So now, the next letter in the acronym PEMDAS is E, which is exponents, all right? So now we have to solve for the exponent 7 squared. Um, a common misconception of many students is multiplying 7 times 2, in which that's not how exponents work. When we break down the exponent, we're multiplying 7 by itself. Yes, we're writing 7 twice, but we're multiplying and we're not doing repeated addition, right? So that's the difference between multiplying and exponents. We have to write that number down twice, but we're not adding that number. We are multiplying that number by itself. So 7 times 7 gives us 49, and now we have 49 times 30 divided by 100. Let's go to that multiplication chart, and let's multiply. 49 times 30 gives us 1,470. Our only two operations are multiplication and division. So we know with the PEMDAS strategy, the M and the D are said to be grouped together. What does that mean? That means whatever operation comes first, that's the one you solve first from left to right, right? 
So from left to right, I saw 49 times 30. That gave us 1,470. And then we saw division, and we have to divide that by 100, giving us 14 and 7 tenths. See, I told you it would be easy. All right, here's the next problem. Which expression shows the prime factorization of 51? Now, let's look at the vocabulary that they use. They said prime factorization. Now, what does that include? It doesn't include composite numbers. Now, we know the difference between prime and composite numbers is that prime only has two factors, one in itself, and composite numbers Wow, they may have many factors. Some have 10 factors, some have 12 factors, okay? So if they have more than two factors, then it's composite. So we're only looking for the numbers that only have two factors. All right, so let's look at five times one. Now, I look at five times one and it really ha doesn't relate to the number 51 other than it has a five in it and it has a one in it. So we know we don't break down and decompose numbers like that. We don't just split them apart and then multiply them because we get all kind of different numbers. All right, so five times one is not correct. B is seven times seven. Hmm, now seven is prime and we know that seven times seven is 49. Very, very close to 51, but it's not the correct answer. 7 is not even a factor of 51, so it's definitely not correct. All right, let's look at 3 times 7. Well, we know 3 is prime, and we know 7 is prime, but we know that 3 times 7 equals 21 and not 51. All right, so let's look at D, 17 times 3. Well, we know 17 times 3 equals 51, but is 3 prime? Yes. Is 17 prime? Hmm, let's think. What two numbers can give us 17 when we're multiplying? 2 times anything doesn't give me 17. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Nah, it's only 17. 1 times 17 gives me 17. So yes, 17 is prime, making that the correct answer. I have two prime numbers. When I multiply the two, I get the product in the problem, which is 51. All right, told you it'd be easy. To simplify the following expression, which operation should be completed first? Now, this is a common problem. Many problems ask us this, but we already know to use PEMDAS, right? P-E-M-D-A-S. We use that acronym and we could never ever go wrong. I'll give you guys about one minute to give me the first step. Hmm. All right, time's up. It's time to solve. So we say that the first letter stands for parentheses and we do have a parentheses. So therefore, it's a no brainer. 15 minus seven gives us eight, but they don't wanna know the answer. They just wanna know what step is first. So it's subtraction, 15 minus seven. D is the correct answer. All the minutes used by Miss Larson and her three children for cell phone calls last month 
were reported on the same bill. The bill showed that a total of 1,850 minutes has been used last month. Ms. Lawson used 462 minutes. Her son used twice as many minutes as she used. And each of her daughters used the same number of minutes. The expression below can be used to find the number of minutes each of Ms. Lawson's daughters used. What was the number of minutes each of Ms. Lawson's daughter used? I'm going to give you guys about a minute to see if you can solve. So I'm looking at this problem and I automatically say to myself, well, I already know the first step would be parentheses since I have a parentheses in my expression. Now, mind you, all problems will not have a parentheses. So when you do have a parentheses, you be sure to solve that first. So I also see in the parentheses that I have a multiplication sign. Okay. And we know that multiplication in any form or fashion comes before addition and subtraction. So therefore, I'm going to multiply those two numbers, 462 times 2, and I get 924. All right. So now my expression reads 1,850 minus 462 minus 924. And then I'm going to put divided by 2. So I'm still working on the parentheses because I have not solved every operation in the parentheses. And now all I have is subtraction left in the parentheses. I'm just going to subtract from left to right. Okay. So 1,850 minus 462 minus 924 is going to give me a difference of 464. I now have 464 divided by 2. And that gives me the answer of 232 minutes. So Miss Lawson's daughter each used 232 minutes. Okay, guys, here's a couple of tips to remember. In order to solve for an order of operation problem, you must use the acronym PEMDAS. That's P-E-M-D-A-S. The P stands for parentheses. The E stands for exponent. The M for multiplication. The D, division. A, addition. And the S, subtraction. Now, remember, multiplication and division are grouped together. So if you see division first, you divide. Or if you see multiplying first, you multiply. And addition and subtraction is grouped together. So if you see subtraction first, you subtract. And with addition, you add. Hey guys, don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Mr. Jones underscore WMS. And on Instagram, Mr. Jones underscore the great. And feel free to ask any pressing questions that you may have from the lesson. Thank you for tuning in.